Hi everyone, now let's now take a look at the equilibrium output position for aggregate demand and aggregate supply in the short run as well as the long run in both of these different uh, interpretations of the LRAS curve. Okay, so firstly when it comes to the short run, uh, economists from the classical school of economics and the Keynesian school of economics, they agree that this is how the scenario is likely to play out. That we will see an upward sloping aggregate supply curve and a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. We can also see that this would correspond to an equilibrium output position equivalent to Y1 at a price level of P1. Okay, so this is nice and straightforward. Now we'll look at various movements of these different curves uh, in subsequent lessons. But for instance, if there was a uh, increase in uh, the cost of inputs or uh, wage costs rose, uh, then what we would of course expect to happen is that the aggregate supply curve would shift to the left and that would correspond with a scenario of cost push inflation uh, where we have lower economic output and a higher price level. Okay, so prices would now rise up to P2 uh, from P1 and equilibrium output or real GDP would decrease from Y1 to Y2. Okay, uh, so that is our scenario in the short run. So let's now consider this when it comes to uh, the long run equilibrium, firstly in the classical model of economics. Now, uh, remember what we looked at last time really focused on the fact that uh, the classical school of economics believes that in the long run the economy will reach a position of full employment. Okay, so let's just depict that here uh, by our LRAS curve. So we've got a perfectly inelastic LRAS curve there and that highlights uh, YF, our position of full employment. Now we can then impose our aggregate demand curve or introduce our aggregate demand curve on that uh, LRAS curve and we can see that aggregate demand intersects uh, L LRAS curve uh, yeah at this point and let's just label that up so that we've got P1 there at YF now at the same time we would have our short run aggregate supply curve cut through at our equilibrium point and we can see that we have our short run equilibrium output here. Now remember what we saw in that lesson that uh, there are adaptive expectations. It really assumes a lot of labour market flexibility that there won't be any trade unions or minimum wages uh, which impede the smooth transition of workers moving from uh, particular jobs or just adjusting their expectations downwards uh, so that they just accept lower wages if need be. So let's just uh, consider that scenario quickly. Uh, so if we reduce the level of aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2 we can see that the economy would move from point A here uh, down to point B. Uh, so down to point B and that would of course lead to a lower equilibrium level of output and we saw that on our labour market diagram in our last lesson where the uh, actual level of employment in the marketplace uh, reduced initially. But in the longer term what would happen is that yes while there that may be that movement taking place in the short run uh, in the longer term, what could be expected to happen according to uh, the uh, classical school of economics is that a new short run aggregate supply curve uh, would be introduced as, la as the labour force uh, have those adaptive expectations and anyone who wants to actually get a job can get a job at a prevailing wage rate. So we therefore see that prices would go down to P2 initially uh, and equilibrium output would fall to Y1 but then the labour market would adjust and people would accept way, uh, lower wages just so that they can actually get a job. Okay, uh, and therefore uh, we can see that the overall 
uh, longer term equilibrium output would be a P3 uh, and that equates to YF. We'll look at this diagram in more detail there but there's a, a brief overview. So let's uh, now just focus on the Keynesian model and how this may be interpreted. Uh, okay, so we draw that out and remember we've reached this point where the curve becomes uh, perfectly inelastic and at that point that is where we achieve uh, YF or full employment. So Keynesian economists remember they do not consider that uh, the labour market always reaches that clearing point where anyone who wants to get a job can actually get a job. Okay, so thus we can see in this sort of scenario, uh, aggregate demand may well be at this point, and this would correspond to a uh, output level or real GDP level of Y1, and this would then correspond with a price level of P1. Okay, uh, so we can see that point there. Now, what we would also see in the same scenario is that if uh, demand fell, aggregate demand in the economy fell, then, well, the economy then has AD2, and we can see the uh, economy shifts backwards, and the level of equilibrium output falls. Okay, now because of that wage stickiness, Keynes argued, no, uh, employees wouldn't want to actually uh, accept lower wages, and therefore we can see that we'd actually have a lower price level, uh, which would be equivalent to uh, P2, where the curve is far more elastic, um, but equilibrium output is reduced in this model in the longer term. So this is interesting to consider here. Uh, and of course we can see that in this model we are way below that level of full employment, whereas the market has cleared in our classical model. Okay, so these are both useful for, uh, uh, in your consideration. Uh, there, it could be, depending upon the paper, that you uh, actually need to use a particular type of diagram. So for instance, if uh, there's a five mark question which asks you to illustrate a situation in the short run and in the long run, well, that could be important there, okay? So it does depend which model uh, you want to use in essays. They're, they're both useful uh, in different scenarios, okay? And we'll break into that in more detail later on. Okay, thanks a lot, guys.